en 1976, Then this was uh, fine-tuned at academic level, uh, still by Walter Stein. It took the, 19, the, the years 2000 to see these concepts emerge at a local level and national level, but also in the field of international cooperation. 2000, that's when the G8 in the US were listening to Japan offering an initiative on the three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle. Japan was offering an international initiative before the G8 because in 2000 it just adopted a law on circular economy. This was officially the first country that passed a law in favor of circular economy. In 2008, Japan held the G8 meeting in Kobe, and they were not making a proposal, but they were adopting the first international cooperation program based on the three R's, which, as you probably know, corresponds to what circular economy is about. That same year, in 2008, in China, they were passing one of the first law on circular economy, which then was uh, cascaded in all cities, regions and provinces in China. Other countries, like in the West, also adopted their own laws on circular economy, and this is the case of France, which in 2014 was passing a law for green transition. In the first draft, there was no mention of circular economy. But at the end of the day, when the law was passed, we saw Title IV, an entire chapter dedicated to circular economy. You can read it, fighting against waste and promoting circular economy from product design to their recycling. Circular economy in France was already mentioned in the law, in the law of uh, July 2014, uh, which was about international solidarity. So in concrete terms, Circular economy started at political in level in France through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, but it, we had to wait for the law on energy transition for circular economy to become part of our law in France. And in France, we have a definition, quite a revolutionary definition, which is very much related to the definition worked out by Adam. I'm not going to read it to you. You can find it on the internet because it's extremely lengthy. But what we want to remember is that this approach is according to life cycles, and we start from eco design to end up with recycling. And recycling is just one of the seven pillars in circular economy, according to the French approach. So here is, for France, a major law on circular economy. And in concrete terms, since this law, we've seen ministerial orders encouraging circular economy in different areas. Here is one recent example, which is Ministerial Order uh, 2016-703 of May 2016 for the use of uh, equipment from circular economy in car repair. And it makes it mandatory for those people who sell these services to provide second-hand parts instead of new parts, and it has an impact on the environment. We encourage the selling of second-hand products, and this is in favor of circular economy. It also has an impact on consumers. Here is an example from a newspaper that compares the average price between new and reused uh, parts for the car-making industry. Still in France, other initiatives 
came to light that the commitment for green growth that was passed on the 27th of April 2016, and this is an initiative that was drafted in the, in the Netherlands to bring together different stakeholders in society, economic stakeholders, state powers, or NGOs, and all these stakeholders decide on objectives with regards to uh, recycling, and these objectives are binding. One mentions recycling of construction waste from building sites with set objectives for 2020 and 2030. So we have multi-stakeholders partnerships with this is uh, very much in the media and it's a public-private partnership that doesn't go through a standard contract but through a softer approach to cooperation and commitment. At European level, other laws were or regulations were passed like the uh, package that was passed at European level with which amends existing regulations on waste or another one about uh, out of use uh, vehicles or batteries and this package brings together existing a regulation standardizes definitions and sets quantitative objectives. I selected three here. Recycling 65% of all municipal waste before, the, before 2030, 15% of packages before 2020, and decreasing landfilling by 18% uh, uh, by 10% between now and 2030. So this is very much focusing on waste and does not address yet the issues of eco-design. But however, it addresses the matter of circular economy and offers room for talk between the member states. Now, that's for state level. Now, for local levels, many other initiatives came to light, and we are going to take a closer look at the initiative taken by the municipality of Paris. So first, there was a one-year thinking process that led to the drafting of the White Book for Circular Economy in Greater Paris, and Paris explains that the objective is to introduce and give weight to new criteria that would be uh, circular economy criteria for public markets. Why such an initiative? There is one figure that you need to remember. For all public markets in France with a value above 90,000 euros, 7% includes environmental or social clauses. That's not a lot. And it does not encourage companies which have invested in circular economy and offer more virtuous products. So this is the initiative in the city of Paris. They're not waiting for the law, and they decide and introduce new criterion by themselves. This is just one example in Paris, but we can take a look at the regions with the industrial symbiosis program supported by ADEM, which aims at testing a program in four regions to generate inter-company synergies, industrial symbiosis, and to do that systematically and gain experience feedback. And this feedback is already very positive. So we talked about politics, we talked about academia and scientific work, but we also need to talk about the funding of circular economy, because we're talking about taking long term in the long term approach into account. So how can we take into account a long term perspective in a financial world, in a world in which high frequency 
machines calculate the exchange of stocks at global level. So how can we do that in decision for investment in for sovereign funds or pension funds? Many banks started thinking about it and start offering new ideas. That's the case for ING. They have their report, which is available online, on how they envisage re-engineering the uh, financial industry. This is also the case for uh, a report available in English by a Rabo Bank. But there is also the initiative of the European Investment Bank, which also wants to include circular economy criteria in the projects, they, in their decision-making process to support projects. This is probably the next step in this transition at global level. At, academy, at academia level, at political level, and maybe in finance tomorrow.